In today's high watt soundbite, we're going to expose a secret weapon that you can utilize in your productions today. The inspiration for today's session comes from an experience that I had in the early 90s. Okay, I know that's a long time ago. I was preparing to go on my very first tour ever. The band was Skinny Puppy, and uh, on that particular tour, Kevin Key was playing live drums. So we had talked in advance of that tour about taking a concept that we had been practicing in the studio, taking it live. What we were doing is we would bring in a couple of radios and we would tune the radios to, to just some random station. And then I would take the outputs of those radios and I would feed them into noise gates. And then we would take the noise gate and and key the, the trigger input off the live drums that we would have in the studio. The experiments and some of the, some of the things that we learned early on doing that, it was just absolutely stunning what could happen because it was always live. It was always like a totally spontaneous. We didn't know what was going to happen next. That was one of the magic things of radio. Well, well, I got very excited and what I ended up building was something very, very cool. I built a 3U rack mount unit that had four car stereos mounted on the front panel. And all of those car stereos, obviously the, the, the guts of those things fit behind everything in this rack. And then I put power supplies in on the back. Now I wired the outputs of all four of those car stereos in stereo on the back of the unit, but we knew we were only going to want a mono signal. So I wired them in a way that when you jacked into the left channel, you actually got mono, you got both channels summed. It's a very, very cool box. So the other key piece to this unit was a four channel gate that had keyable inputs, of course. I took the audio for each one of those uh, 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 car stereos and I fed them into each one of the gates. Then we fed those gates back into Kevin's mixer and then the key input we triggered off drums didn't take very much thought to realize we're going to be playing in some venues that are going to be underground or in a bunker almost. So we're not going to be able to pick up a radio station for the life of us when we get into some of these venues. So you can imagine 90 minute cassettes. I just recorded radio random radio stations on both sides of the cassette. All four of the car stereos were auto reverse. So turned into this wonderful source that was rack mounted. That unit was part of our sound for many years. In fact, we set it up in the studio a number of times and, and used it as well. So a couple of years ago, I was, I was recalling that, that radio device and I was thinking, why am I not using that in my productions anymore? Like, why am I not using gated radio as much as I used to? It was such a creative and powerful tool. Well, I decided I was gonna make a radio template session in Pro Tools. And all I basically did is I just went to internet radio stations and recorded like 10 minutes of a radio station. And then I would go back and turn that one off and tune the radio station to some radically different sounding station and I would record 10 minutes of that. So on my template radio session, I've got a 10 minute session, I've got 10 tracks of program radio plan, all 10 of them are gated, and all 10 of those gates are keyed starting at bus 15, 16, 17, 18, all the way up. Well, I can't tell you how many times I've used that in the last couple of years. This radio gator session is so fun. I leave it on a hard drive. Every time I want to use this effect, I just go back to my template and I copy it onto a brand new place on a hard drive and I just dig into that. I always leave the original template intact, but I just totally screw around and mess with the other one you can import all or one of those tracks to any given session and you've got this great creative source to just start throwing triggers to and see what happens. So I built a super quick session by throwing a very simple drum part where I've got all the drums separated and isolated and I've got all my 10 radio sta stations playing out and they're all gated of course. And so I just went ahead and started playing around with uh, triggering off some of these radios with different drums. I added a bass line that's, that's, that's a, from a synth, but everything else is coming off a crazy number of gates. Check it out.
so that's obviously in its very early stages. This is just a new idea that I've been developing, but I want to go through this because there are some very, very cool things going on here that are just gated radios. And I'm going to start with just the kick drum. Let's have a listen to what's playing on the kick. And so that's these two. Okay, so I'm just gating one of the radios there with the kick drum, right? The snare is all by itself. Okay, so here's another radio that I'm just, it's on the snare drum, but I've got the threshold on that gate set to where it's only opening once in a while. It's not opening on every single thing that happens on the snare drum. It's very, very cool. Check it. So you can hear that it's only opening every so often, right? And then I've got it going into the nice delay. Very, very cool. Okay, so in this next section of the track, what I've done is I've, I've opened up a gate on the kick drum that's, that's a spoken word, it's dialogue. Very cool, I put some extra effects on it. Super neat, check it. So you start to imagine where this can go. Now I'm gonna warn you as a producer, if you're gonna build a session like this, you better be prepared to lose like at least two days of your schedule because you're gonna bury yourself into this world. It might be a couple of days until anyone sees you again. The beauty of having all of these radios recorded linearly like this in our, in our DAW and not having the radio station actually broadcasting live, of course, is that we can change the relative position of all of those tracks. A lot of times, of course, you start working and, and you open up a new station and of course it's totally in the wrong key. It's not in the right key that you're working in. And sometimes I use a pitch control. I'll, I'll just take the whole track, the audio track, and I'll pitch it. But more often than not, initially, I'll just keep shifting that track around and listening to the results. And very often what happens is it's just like, oh, wrong, wrong, no, no, and you shift and you shift and all of a sudden it's just like, whoa, what's that? And this magical thing happens because you finally found the piece that's in tune with the rest of the track that you're working on. Oh my goodness, you can see how much fun you have doing this. All of these things are gated in such a way that you can't recognize where it all came from or or what it's all about so a lot of times you can really help out your kind of melody line by working on your radio session for a while and, and develop some some vibe and a, and a good groove and then go ahead and write yourself a bass line from a virtual synth that's going to kind of help glue everything together that's all i did in this track I hope this inspires you to create your very own radio gator session and start gating radios. Oh my goodness. The people that you love and that are closest to you will probably not see you for at least a couple of days. You're going to get so buried in your own session. Oh my gosh. Have fun gating radios. Well, thank you very much for sitting in on today's session. And if you feel this session has value, please consider subscribing to my channel and by all means, go ahead and share this session with a friend or colleague.